What's good, people? I hope everybody's having a blessed day. It's Rap Mythology, the reincarnation of Ramakrishna coming at you like a true knocker, all right? I'm going to give it to you raw and direct today. I got my notes. I ain't even trying to be cute. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing work all day. I started a TikTok account. Follow me on TikTok at Rap Mythology. You know what I mean? I did like eight videos. This is the ninth one. I'm in the zone right now. Super connected with spirit. Like, I got so many ideas coming at me i can't even like i could barely pick one thing to do so you know what i'm saying because this is like all coming at me at one time and i'm like want to do everything at once you know what i mean so here we go though all right today we're talking about the jezebel conspiracy of hollywood in the music industry the jezebel conspiracy of hollywood in the music industry the jezebel spirit is associated with narcissistic personality disorder so a general red flag to know that you're dealing with a narcissist overt or covert is to pay attention on what type of entertainment they enjoy what type of entertainment do they value music and tv are powerful forms of influence through entertainment how do you control a mass population by dictating that population's religion food education and lastly, entertainment. If I can control what type of music you listen to, I know that I can have a subtle effect on your decision making and even your thoughts. After observing the current state of social values in America, it is my opinion that a plan has been put in place to spiritually condemn the divinity of souls on a mass scale, to the point where evil, manipulation, control, Perversion and greed are seen as the societal norm. You could consider the Jezebel spirit a legion of millions of demons. So I wanna show you how this agenda is being carried out by just going over the top five songs in the Billboard charts right now and the top five movies in the box offices right now. I wanna show you how narcissism is celebrated by the top mass media companies in America and projected into the minds of the masses. All right, so here we go. The top five songs on the Billboard charts in America right now. First song is Easy On Me by Adil. This song is not actually so bad. So in that song by Adil, she's kind of talking about being a victim of narcissism and how it kind of affected her and the choices that she made uh, growing up. So. In this song, um, Adil is talking about the effects of narcissism. It's actually a pretty good song. It's, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even gonna front. I like Adil. But she's talking about you know, how the trauma from her childhood affected her decision making as a young adult. The next song is Stay by Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber. <laughs> now this song is straight up about um, the narcissist keeping a person for their energy supply and how much they value that energy supply and not the actual person. I do the same thing I told you that I never would. I told you I changed even though I knew I never would. <laughs> the top three song on the Billboard charts right now is Lil Nas X, uh, Industry Baby. All right, and I'm just gonna give you a, um, a couple of lines out of the first part of the song. He says, uh, tell a rap nigga, I don't see ya. I'm a pop nigga like Bieber. I don't fuck bitches, I'm queer, but these bitch niggas like Medea. Alrighty then. All right, the video itself is very narcissistic. You know, being gay or whatever, cool, but having multiple sexual partners, um, forcing your sexuality onto other people, right, is a big form of narcissism. You know what I'm saying? And this is a, an agenda in the music industry on TV as well right now. Back in the days, you would never see anything gay on TV. It was taboo. But now it's almost like you're being force fed. You know what I'm saying? This is very narcissistic. Number four on the top billboard chart right now is Walker Hayes, Fancy Like. And he's talking about cheap dates in the song and how he likes to go on cheap dates. But it's kind of like he's making it like it's the standard. You know what I'm saying? You know, once in a while when I get paid, we step it up from... Wendy's to Applebee's, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go on vacation. I want to go to the spa. I'm trying to go to the zoo. I want to go to a concert. Like, that's the best that you got is Applebee's, word? Oh, shut, shut yo. It should get around me and be having the time of her life, bro. <laughs> that's cool, cheap dates are cool, but 
we gotta take it up a notch after a while. Number five, all on the Billboard charts right now. Top five song in the country, Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran. Bro, just look at the cover, like the picture for the song. This dude has vampire teeth. Immediately I'm thinking energy vampire. Bad Habits. Not healing the bad habits or getting rid of the bad habits, but my bad habits led me to you. This is some toxic relationship, narcissistic, codependency, addiction, not good at all. You do not want to be looking at this as cool. Vampire teeth. Now ODB had the vampire teeth. The whole Wu-Tang was rocking the vampire teeth at once. They were coming up out of being energy vampires, selling cracks and living on the streets and whatnot. That's kind of like the energy that they was right in when they first came out. And they was going kind of hard body with the vampire teeth. But they were spitting knowledge though, you know what I'm saying? And, and, they, and they lost it after a while. After a while, you know, the vampire teeth wasn't cool and all of that. Bad Habits, number five, top five song in America right now on the Billboard charts. So four out of five of the songs were heavily narcissistic and being made cool. Oh, and before I forget, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe like a true knocker. Okay, now, so, top five movies in the box offices right now. Let me know in the comments what you think about some of these movies, all right? Top movie, number one movie in the box office right now is Doom. This movie takes place on a desert planet, like on a new planet somewhere, right? On this harsh desert, there's a substance called Spice. There's a drug called Spice that's on the street now. But in this movie, um, the drug uh, Spice, it extends human vitality. And the spice is crucial for interstellar travel or astral travel. You don't need anything outside of yourself to go into the spirit realm. This spice would be something that I couldn't even mess with. I think it's preaching codependency and addiction as well. But let me know in the comments what you think about that. Second, number two movie in America in the box offices right now. Halloween Kills, Michael Myers. Totally obvious, psychopath. They keep bringing Michael Myers back, he never dies. Straight um, narcissistic, but now we're going on to some sociopath type. We've watched um, murder documentaries and stuff like that, I'm sure. It's always the serial killers, the sociopaths who are attracted to movies like this. We watch them over and over and over again. All right, so number two uh, movie in the country right now, Halloween. Halloween Kills. The third top movie in the box offices right now, all right, 007. No time to die. Let me know, do you think 007 is a narcissist? He does wear a mask and murder throughout the whole movie. I don't know, he could be on the good side or he's on the bad side, or it's kind of a blur in between. James Bond be into triangulation? I don't know, it's a, that's kind of a tough one. Do you think James Bond is a narcissist? Let me know in the comments. Number four, movie in the box office, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. To me, this is the ultimate battle between the narcissist and the empath. We know Carnage is a straight psychopath, narcissistic. Venom, I'm not sure, you know what I'm saying? Venom is kind of a good guy, you know what I mean? I hope I'm not messing it up for anybody, but I heard that the movie ends with Venom biting Carnage's head off, so. Do you think that Venom is narcissistic? We know Carnage is definitely narcissistic. <laughs> Number five, top five movie in the box offices right now in America, Bebot. This movie is straight up dealing with cell phone addiction, ad addiction to technology. We're all seeing this now, we're all experiencing this now, you know what I'm saying? I tried to put my phone down for a week, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. I put my phone down, like I didn't log on to Instagram or anything like that. I use social media for like a week. I missed like two jobs doing that shit. You gotta, you gotta um, detach from the cell phone every now and then because it is addictive. They make it so you know um, you getting likes, you getting views, and all that. All that is addictive. That kind of gives you a high. So Bebot is cell phone and technology addiction made cool. Bebot becomes an individual's best friend. Now in the movie, everybody has a Bebot, just like how everybody has a cell phone. Eventually, over time, something like this would uh, replace human interaction. Not good, not good at all. I mean, and this is a kid's cartoon movie, you know what I'm saying? Saying that addiction to technology is cool. I hope I got my point across. Hollywood movies and top charted music 
are mostly an attack on the psyche. You'll find a few good movies and good songs to get through. If you're not able to see through the agenda of mass media programming, it will definitely have an effect on your subconscious mind. I didn't even talk about rap and drill and reality TV. That's a whole nother video. So now, dealing with red flags. This is one way you can tell early on in a relationship that you might be dealing with a narcissist because they love bomb when they first meet you. So it's hard to sometimes kind of identify the narcissist upon first meeting them because it depends on their love bomb game. If they have a weak love bomb game, they tend to overdo it. But a narcissist can love bomb you for months, maybe even years. But once they get what they want, boom, they switch up on you. So you can identify a narcissist quickly, right? This will be a red flag right here by observing their choices in entertainment. What kind of music they like, what kind of movies they watch. And also, they will want total control of the entertainment that you guys watch together. If it's a movie, if it's choosing a TV show, they will always want to choose the TV show. If it's going to a movie, they will always want to choose the movie. If it's listening to music, they will always want to choose the music that you guys are listening to. And your choice of music will be insignificant. You'll be considered lame for your choice of music or for your taste in movies or other types of entertainment. They will devalue that quick. Narcissists will never admit that they want to control anything. You know what I'm saying? You just got to observe it for yourself. So they will try to make you a fan of what they like. They'll try to make you a fan of what they like. So you end up losing little pieces of yourself if you try to stay with this person. This is part of the grooming process. They do this to groom you to deal with all their toxicity. All right, but we're gonna end it there. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.